Today we meet a company that gives a whole new meaning to man on the moon. Your average asteroid that would fit in the size of the room that you're in could be worth a trillion dollars in precious metals. Moon Express is one of the companies competing in a race to land on the moon. The winning team receives the Google Lunar X Prize of $30 million. Hi Bob and welcome to Cadella. Hi Crystal, great to be here. Now you're looking at the moon as a creative resource and you're planning to mine it for rare materials. What resources do you plan to find on the moon? Well, we have a lot of data about the moon which is really exciting. You know, we, we as a human species have been going to the moon for over 40 years now, almost 50 years with robots and humans. So the moon is really well sampled. We know that there are a lot of rare earth elements and platinum group metals on the moon. The thing that's happened to the moon is for billions of years it's been bombarded by meteors and asteroids. So the same material that came from space that enriched the earth with precious resources has been enriching the moon for the same billions of years. And it's still there. So when we go to the moon we're going to find many of the same elements we have on earth. The difference is they're a lot easier to get to once you're at the moon. Okay, so there must be a really good reason why you're going all the way to the moon to get these. Are these rare materials and, and rare elements, are they depleting on Earth? Is it a necessity that we go to the moon to get them? Well, the thing is, um, the moon is different than the Earth in that in the early history of the bombardment, when the asteroids were hitting both the Earth and the moon, the Earth was molten for most of its early history. So all that heavy metal sunk, and it kind of squirts up a little bit, and that's what we have to mine to get deep to it, and it's very hard to get. Now, on the moon, there could be more platinum group metals than all the reserves of Earth very close to the surface. And that's because the moon has been, unlike the Earth, it's been hard. It's been a hard surface for most of, most of its history. So when the asteroids hit, uh, they typically either vaporize, so are very uniformly distributed among the dirt of the moon. Uh, but some of them have shattered. And so there's chunks of very valuable uh, asteroid materials up there. Your average asteroid that would fit in the size of the room that you're in could be worth a trillion dollars in precious metals. Now you're planning on creating a permanent transportation system between the Earth and the Moon. How exactly do you plan on fueling this? So first of all, um, our company Moon Express is not building the entire transportation system. So there are companies out there that sell rockets and they sell rocket motors. As a matter of fact, you can buy everything that you need to get to the moon commercially except the part where you have to slow down and land. And that is the piece of technology that the Moon Express is concentrating on. So we'll likely be buying rockets from companies like SpaceX, which very recently had a phenomenal success sending the first private space capsule to the International Space Station. Uh, so we ourselves will be using the fuel uh, of those commercial rockets to get to the moon and then our small robotic landers uh, will be descending and landing on the moon softly with retro rockets. Now I, I had read that there was actually water found on the moon and that you were planning on using some of that as part of the fuel as well, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So, so we live on a water planet, Earth, which is rich in water. We tend to take it for granted, but water is extremely precious in space. And water has the elements of rocket fuel. So the space shuttle that everybody's familiar with really ones, runs on the constituents of water, oxygen and hydrogen. So unlike what we thought about the moon in the early 60s and 70s when we first landed there with humans, we thought it was a dead, dry world. And we kind of left it. We abandoned it very quickly, thinking well, there's not, nothing much of interest there. But it turns out, and the last 10 years of robotic probes that have gone to the moon have proven that there are vast reserves of water on the moon and distributed in ice uh, uniformly around the moon but very concentrated at the lunar poles and this is a game-changing discovery because the water becomes rocket fuel and that can change the economics of the entire solar system so once we get to the moon one of the most precious resources we need to mine and develop is the water itself which can change the economics of getting the more precious metals and other resources of the moon off the moon and back to Earth and for use in space. There's going to be people going back and forth, but now with the discovery of water, do you think that people will eventually be able to live on the moon? Well, absolutely. Uh, so it, this is about the expansion of human civilization into a multi-planet species. That's the long-term goal. We, you know, we as a species can't survive on one planet forever. Uh, sooner or later, there's going to be a very bad day. It happened to the dinosaurs. So what we need to do is make sure that uh, we 
invest a little bit of our energy and, and our creativity as a species into becoming a multi-planet species so that when that day comes, we'll either have the technology to avert the disaster. It's not clear that Bruce Willis will be able to come over the horizon and save the day. We need to have the technology uh, in order to save us from that or, you know, ultimately to have a species that is resident on other worlds like Mars and the moon and other places. Now, Bob, there's this race to get to the moon. Companies all over the world are competing to be the first that lands on the moon with a chance to win the Google Lunar X Prize of $30 million. Is that your motivation behind going to the moon? The Google Lunar X Prize is a masterstroke of motivation and public exposure to the importance of the moon uh, to our future. Uh, the prize money of $30 million is great in that uh, it's a motivational force. Um, the good thing is... Uh, Google is excited about this. It means that a big company like Google thinks that this is important. Um, the challenge is that $30 million is nowhere near the amount of money it's going to take to actually win such a prize. And that's by design. Uh, the X prizes are designed to be motivational, not to be a fully funded challenge. Um, this is not a race to new technology as much as it is a race to a new way of thinking, a new business plan, opening up a whole new economic industry and creating an economic dipole between the Earth and the Moon. When uh, the commitment had made by Paul Allen to win the Google Lunar X, to win the Ansari X Prize, uh, he had no idea what might happen. Uh, but what did happen is Richard Branson came in uh, as the prize was about to be won and said, this is a great idea, I'll invest my money, let's commercialize this, and Virgin Galactic was born. And now we are close to having the capability to be able to buy tickets, all of us, to go into space. So a whole new industry was born. And we expect the same sort of thing to happen after the Google Lunar X Prize. And now, finally, this is a pretty big feat that you're taking on. What is your biggest challenge so far? So the, cha so the challenge is convincing minds that this is possible. So we live in a we live in age where technology is advancing at such an accelerating pace that uh, it's become very quickly possible for a private entrepreneurial team to do things that was only possible by superpowers just a little while ago. So uh, space is very hard. It's very new. Most people think it's, it's the things that governments do. And the, the idea of private companies doing things is just starting to be revealed and, and, and realized. Um, the feat by SpaceX last week and going in a private capsule to the space station was phenomenal. Uh, the winning of the Ansari X Prize, which was a global event that was watched by hundreds of millions of people, was phenomenal. Um, when the first private company lands on the moon, uh, which we hope will be Moon Express, it will be a phenomenal change of perspective. So we believe that the, uh, we're into a very exciting era where uh, the world will accelerate at a pace where not only 10 years from now, um, the, moon would, the moon would be part of our world as we think about it. Um, it won't be long before kids are born into this world and be able to look up and know that there's people on the moon. And uh, not too long from now, that know there's people on Mars. And we truly will become a multi-planet species. Well, it's been great having you with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Very happy to be on the program and best of luck. We'll see you on the moon. <laughs> For more information on MoonX and other companies that we'll be talking to, go to our website at cadella.com.